squacks are on the bowl for the stew. We got about uh, 12. I ought to make about five cups of squirrel. All right, it's morning after. We're going in to dip the squirrels out and we're gonna take them inside, put them in some cold water and start the deboning process. I got Squirrel Huntress Jr. working with me. Her fresh new haircut, we got her pot. And we're fixing to go live on this uh, Brunswick stew. Oh gosh, grab them like you're working with a Tonka truck or something. There you go. They're already deboning their cells. I have to teach her how to use tongs. Limb chicken goodness. Oh, she has stirred it all up. Refine that technique a little bit. Help her to grab them and not make such a mess. And this is going to be a fly by the seat of your pants. Uh, Squirrel Brunswick stew video. Don't expect any wild editing. Okay, you can pause the screen if you need to to see what the recipe is and how to cook. This is from a taste of southern.com and I am subbing squirrels for the pork and the chicken. Oop. Of course, we got all the ingredients and such laid out here, how we're gonna make it. And of course I went a little heavy on these uh, bags. I'm supposed to have one pound bags. I got two pound bags, but see how much I put in there. I'm gonna eyeball it, wing it. That's kind of the way this recipe is supposed to go together. You just uh, throw it all together, make sure the taste suits you and then roll on with it. All right, when you're deboning your squirrel, these are back legs. You wanna make sure you get all the bones out. There's a bone in here, I call it a toothpick bone. That's it right there. You gotta watch that one. If you leave that one in your meat, you may have some uh, unhappy recipients of a mouthful. So make sure you get that bone out. And then from there, all your back leg is ready to be put in for the stew. And we need five cups for this recipe. Another good piece of meat off of a squirrel is the tenderloins and the back straps that come right down the spine, inside stomach wall uh, muscles. This is a really meaty part of the squirrel. All right, we're gonna let Squirrel Huntress Jr. work this back strap. Move your hand, I can't see back strap and uh, tenderloin area, spine region. She's breaking it down, making sure there's no bones in it. All right, there's a nice chunk of meat. One of the back straps. Flip that other side over and get that other chunk off and pull the spinal column out. There you go. Probably about all the meat on that. Way to go, bro Cita. Oh. And our five cups of squirrels has been accomplished. Now we're ready to move on with the recipe. All right, corn and lima beans going in the colander there. And uh, they're gonna get rinsed down. I'm going with the full on two, two pounds of each. Gonna rinse them under some water. And then they're going in the stock pot. Nothing, nothing really exciting here. Alright, corn and beans. Going in the stock pot. If I can make this happen alright. They should be a little less frozen than this, but uh I'm on time constraint, baby, so uh we're gonna roll with what we got going. Dunda. Yeah, Dogs clean it up. Here. 
clean it up. We're working in a clean environment. Oh, put it stuff in, in a pot. There. Yep, mm -hmm, I do. Potatoes are also going in this time. Uh, you can peel and dice your own, but we're going with stuff in the can. Now we need to add enough water across the top of the vegetables to be about two inches above it. Now we're going to cook them over medium heat with that two inch level above the uh, vegetables. We're going to cook it at medium heat for about an hour, stirring rapidly to make sure that the vegetables get their cook on. While my vegetables are boiling for that hour, I'm going to go ahead and start measuring out my ingredients. My two tablespoons of brown sugar, a tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt, which you choose whatever salt you want to roll in. Uh, and then I got two tablespoons of, no, one tablespoon of black pepper. I'm gonna dice my onion. I'm gonna cut up my strips of bacon. I'll get my Texas Pete measured out, my Worcestershire sauce, and uh, the rest of the stuff I need measured out while my vegetables are boiling down. And through the magic of video, it's been right around an hour, and now it's time to bring these over to the sink and drain off just enough water to leave just at the top of the vegetables and then we'll get started adding our other ingredients. And that's what we're looking like just over top of the vegetables. Back on the eye and we're going to add our other ingredients. I'm gonna somewhat go off the directions and then in other spots I'm not because there's no bacon called for in it but I like bacon in mine so we're gonna roll with bacon. So tomato sauce is up first. Say if you need a little bit of water to wash out what you got in the can, that would be advisable. Because Brunswick stew is supposed to be tomato based. Putting in two 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce. Next up is the quarter cup of, I put some Bragg vinegar in mine, apple cider, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of, I got pink Himalayan salt. steam hit it. Calls for half a stick of butter. I'm going full stick. Nothing wrong with making it your own. Salt added please. Quarter cup of the Texas Pete. Brunswick stew should have a touch of uh, heat to it. This is the way to do it. Get some kajuga jugas in there, like Justin Wilson used to say. Quarter cup. Mmm, that'll make it nice. Tomato paste is coming up next. That's not gonna work. I have to dig in there with a spoon and get that out. Mmm, delicious. That'll help thicken things up. Please disregard the Hallmark channel in there. That's none of my doing.
a little late on my stew this year. I know I promised it back in August, but you know, time constraints. And for those of you who watched the live video, I did pass my test while I was there. Yay me. There's my timer. Everybody loves little Fred Sanford. broke down yeah look at that nice red color coming in smelling pretty good right now I don't have any heat on but if you want to have some heat on I you could turn it on low I'll go ahead and add my diced bacon my five cups of squirrel Good, right? Quarter cup of ketchup. Yeah, looks about right. Tomato base, baby. Get all that ketchup out. cup of barbecue sauce and I'm gonna go with some sweet baby rays. Did I say quarter cup? I think it calls for a cup. One cup. I'm not sure I'll get a cup out of this. Mm, pardon me. There we go. One cup of the baby rays. Make sure you're uh pot's big enough because you're going to run out of space if you do it in something small. We're going to stir all that together and we're going to return ourselves to medium heat stirring often. Oh yeah, it's going to thicken up. That squirrel's going to break down. Gonna be real nice. We'll go ahead and turn ourselves back to some medium heat, and then it'll be time to let it simmer. And we'll come back for a little taste test. I forgot the onion. No way, dude. Got to get it in there. Add some off flavor to it. The Brad James trying to chime in while I'm making stew here. Yeah, there we go. Mix in a little bit of all in all. It will be best stool ever. I will show you. It is legendary squirrel hunter stool. I almost forgot the two cups of chicken broth, bros. And brositas. That's going to thin it out a little bit. That might be good for it. That's a little on the thick side at the moment. I like my stew a little thick though. How about that? However, you could substitute squirrel broth in this uh, scenario also. And it's about to be taste test time. Official taste test time. Squirrel Hunters Jr. over here. I'm gonna let her taste some. It's gonna be a little hot, but blow on it. Don't get your fancy new hairdo in it. All right. It's good. It's good. It's good. I it's love this squirrel good. too, man. It's good. Yep. Turn out good. Look at that. Got a little bit of bite at the end. Got a little bit of Texas peat heat. Um. Good tomatoey flavor. I don't taste the um Texas heat. You don't taste the Texas beet in it? I don't taste it. 
I can feel a little bit of heat. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. It's a bug. Swirl over here. You got this dragon. Tastes real good to me. One of my favorite ways to eat the squirrel. One of the quickest and easiest ways to make some squirrel. So, you don't have to follow my recipe to a T, just make it as a guideline and uh, cure yourself about 10 or 12 squirrels and make yourself some squirrel stew. It's delicious. Real good. I'm going to have some more after this. I'm sure you will. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this recipe and uh, hope you make some yourself. Bye.